going to look at how the steel easy file system works and this is quite a new product onto the market for sharpening and it comes in very very handy so we have here a steel MS200T well used um, how do we know what sort of chain it's running well in fact we could probably do this with the camera let's rotate it round because the bar's upside down where are we looking for? Ah, and there we go. So we can see there, it's a Pico chain. And this is Steel's own name for 3 8 low profile chain. So it's a Pico, it's a 14 inch bar. Uh, the gauge there is hard to see now because it's 1.3mm, 0.050 of an inch. Drive link count is 50. So the bar tells us what we need to know. And there we have 3 eighths for 3 eighths Pico chain. Now looking at the easy file it consists of two round files and a flat file. And pay attention to those arrows because you'll find that if you use it the wrong way round it, uh, it just won't do anything and you'll wonder what's going on. So first job, I think you've guessed it, is we need to slacken that chain because it's too hard pulling a, you can see the uh, chain tension, see the chain, you can see the chain tension in there so let's just ease him back a notch or two. I'm not wearing gloves so I can better show what in film. And get a nice flow, look that's now flowing round. To start off with we need to figure out which way round do we hold the file, is it this way, is it that way? Have a look at the arrows there. So we want to be filing the chain in this direction. So the arrow here tells us this side up. It looks complicated but it's actually not complicated at all. Now I'm just going to move the camera so you can see down, see that tooth there. So there's the tooth, that round file is there, the flat file rests on the depth gauge and the other round file is up in the, the air. The movement is exactly the same. I'm going to take a picture of the tooth now so we can get a better idea just exactly what that action is doing. So again the tooth here. I know it's on the far side but if you look at the side plate angle there it's about 75 degrees and that's what we're aiming for. Now over here you can see with the action of the flat file part on the easy file has lowered this depth gauge and as per the other video I've done on depth gauges you need to have a gap or you're aiming for a gap of 0.025 of an inch here in order for the wood to feed smoothly and easily up into that working point there. And what the easy file does is it reduces this depth gauge here in line with that tooth. So it always maintains that gap. 
and then in a second you'll see I've ramped the depth gauge so rather than having it go straight and then down by ramping it here it means there's a smoother transition for the wood up and into the, the tooth. The tooth has been sharpened and the depth gauge is adjusted. You can also put a small ramp on the front so that it's not too flat there. Uh, you can do this in a... Some people like to put uh, a depth gauge setter there and then... Good idea really because you can then protect the tooth you've just sharpened. So that goes just down there, a few strokes across. You don't want to reduce it anymore. What you're looking to do is make a ramp shape so it feeds the wood in smoothly into the cutter head. Again, notice the direction of travel. that upper fraction to there and we can go again and so on until you've completed all the chain. But you can see it's a handy tool because it automatically does the depth gauges for you. You don't have to do them afterwards. And it gets them to the correct height.